Hello, my name is Tom Lukman and this is an absolute beginner's guide to Blender. Now I'm going to be working uh, under assumption that you've never used Blender before and that you're quite possibly new to the 3D world. Uh, we're going to be making a simple rock formation scene as you see on screen. Uh, I say simple because actually while it may seem complex to you, it's very easy to make and this is why I pretty much picked it for this tutorial as the ending result will hopefully motivate you to learn Blender further. So, let's begin. I'm going to open up a new scene in Blender which is what you'll be seeing on your screens as you start Blender. If you haven't by now started. Uh, so, and before I begin this tutorial I will just activate a quick add-on here. You, don't, you guys don't have to do this. It's just a screencast add-on which will show you which buttons I'm hitting here on the bottom left. So, anyway, forget I did this. Uh, now, uh, this is our default view uh, which everybody gets. We are in object mode uh, there are several modes for manipulating our objects, but today we will be focused on object and edit. Uh, you can switch between them by picking them here or by hitting the tab key. Now before we begin, I would like to quickly show you how to move your view around. Uh, by hitting the middle mouse button, your camera will rotate around the point of view, which is right now the default cube. If you hit shift and middle button, you can move it up, down, left, right. Uh, and further, there are other views such as front view by hitting numpad 1, uh, right, right view by hitting 3, and if you hit numpad 7, you will get top view. And uh, there is numpad 5, which will switch between the perspective and orthographic view. Uh, the difference between those two is that perspective will may is more like a natural view and it will make objects that are away from the camera seem smaller while the ones that are closer will be bigger and orthographic doesn't do this it's more of a technical view and you will probably no probably but definitely use it a lot when modeling just because you will see the accurate distance between your objects and stuff uh, don't worry about not remembering all these shortcuts because you can always hit view here and under view there are all those different options you can learn and try and you're welcome to experiment with them on your own but for now let's go back to some other view like this one uh, now on our scene in object mode uh, the purpose of object mode is to organize objects and the, to manipulate them, move them around, scale them. Now what is an object? It's not necessarily this cube here. Our object can be some light or our virtual camera here or there are some other types of objects but you will learn them eventually later on. Now the reason why uh, we have a default cube on is because whether you know it or not actually uh, when you work with 3D objects, you will when you start modeling, you will mo in most cases start modeling from a cube. Because the key idea in 3D is to keep your object simple, uh, have the least geometry possible, and uh, start working simple and just add details, uh, the only the details you, you need. Never add extra details that you don't need otherwise you will end up with complex geometry and in trouble so we're going to be making rocks today and since I'm now in object mode all I can do is move this cube around and I want to edit it make it look like a rock so as I said it we will go to edit mode and now you can see our uh, object has changed a little bit. Well, we can see some points in space. These points in space are called vertices. Uh, now, I forgot one important thing. You can select each and every individual vertex by right-clicking your mouse button, 
which is uh, not what most of you are used to. Typically, applications by default use the left click for selecting uh, stuff. Blender is different and it uses right click. It's sort of annoying for new users and uh, well the reason why it's so because Blender used to be like uh, a game editing software owned by some company and they did it this way and sort of stuck. Now you can change the, uh, this behavior in user preferences and clicking on input and here select left instead of right but I do not recommend you do this because if you do uh, all the tutorials out there that you are going to watch, including my own, uh, will no longer work for you. Because every time I say right click, you will actually have to remember to do left click. And it's gonna get confusing. So, while it may be a pain in the butt, it's better to actually get used to this system. And uh, while we're on the subject, you will probably, if you haven't already, accidentally left click all over the place and what this will do is it will move your 3D cursor this little thing around the, s the scene and uh, what that does actually I will show you by going back in object mode uh, this 3D cursor tells Blender where to add new objects while we're on the subject I'm going to add another cube just to demonstrate so you can either do it by going here select add then select mesh and select cube or just shift A add mesh cube so uh, anyway as I was saying if you accidentally move this thing uh, it cannot be undone and it's annoying but in most cases you can fix it by hitting shift S and selecting cursor to center now if you forget any of the shortcuts or any of the options you, you can always hit spacebar and just type in what you're looking for so like for example cursor there you go snap cursor to center and there you go so even if you wanted to add your cube you can always add mesh or add cube just start typing and BAM we added another cube so if you forget anything remember spacebar to the rescue anyway I'm going to write shift and right select these three cubes and by hitting delete on my keyboard I will just delete them so let's go back to finally modeling our rock so uh, this cube is far from looking like a rock and that's the reason for it is that there are not, not enough vertices so or as we say in 3D world not enough geometry now if you don't know what a vertex is a vertex is a 3D point in space and if you select and connect these points in space you will get edges or polygons in between so this is an edge, this line between two vertices and this is a polygon or a quad in this case normally in 3D we want our objects to be made of quads if possible because quads represent a neat geometry and uh, you can uh, change what you select by clicking down here so this is for the vertex selection this is for edge selection and this is for polygon selection or quad selection now I'm going to go back to the vertex view and I'm going to hit the A key which will select all the vertices if it doesn't hit it again so because it selects all this selects all so select all of it and that's pretty much it because since we don't have enough geometry we cannot begin uh, to turn this cube into uh, a rock and to get more geometry the simplest and easiest way is to go back to object mode over here select modifier stacker add modifier 
and select subdivision surface. Now you can already see something going on with our cube. Don't touch anything yet. Select view 2. Increase our view to 2. What that did is a Blender added more vertices in between those original vertices and uh, so, sort of turned this cube into a spherical object. However, if we go back to edit mode, you will notice that we still have our own original cube. So, our simple cube is still there, only Blender adds uh, the, uh, vertices in between and makes it look a bit smarter and smoother and more complex. Now, since we actually do want to manipulate all these vertices individually, we will have to go back into object mode and apply this modifier. So, now if you go back in edit mode, you can see that we have all the vertices we can manipulate. Now, back in object mode, uh, this is still far from smooth looking rock, mainly because it's flat shaded. So, here on the T panel, if you don't have it on, just press T and it will come, it will come on. This is why it's often referred to uh, as a T panel. And the other one is the end panel. So if you hit N key, it's called the end panel because you turn it on with N and manipulates all these numbers. Uh, which are location of your object, size, rotation and blah blah blah. We will get to it eventually. And down here on the end panel you can also change the name of the object, which I will do right now and call it rock.000. Now I recommend you do this because if you take a look up here on the scene manager, you will be able to easily select it by selecting rock000 then. And once you get plenty of rocks, you don't want them all named cube cube cube. And if you add dot zero 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 any duplicates we make later on, which I will demonstrate by now by clicking Shift D and duplicating, we now have a rock 001. So it's a quick and easy way to automatically name your objects when you make new ones. But anyway, here on the T panel, set shading to smooth. Now, if you look at our our rock here, or what's going to be a rock. Uh, you will notice that you can still see some triangles. Now, we don't want this in the scene because it will, it will not look very realistic, but we still want to have simple geometry to manipulate. This is where modifiers come in handy. So I'm going to add another subdivision surface modifier here by going to add subdivision surface and select 2. Or you can do it by pressing Ctrl 2. So to demonstrate, I will destroy this modifier and just hit Control 2. It gives you the same thing. Now the 2 is not the numeric keypad 2, but the other one on the main keyboard. So don't confuse these two, because Blender sees them differently. Anyway, we are here. And now what we've got, if you go to edit mode, we have uh, uh, we still have our original mesh or geometry. But it's smoothed out by Blender is smoothing it out automatically. So this lets us have a smooth looking object without having lots of extra geometry because now the sphere has 1538 vertices and if we were to manipulate it you know like this, it's going to be really really difficult to work with such a complex geometry. So we don't want this. I will I want this, I want it to be simple. So let's begin making our rock. Uh, I'm gonna go to the front view now and make sure it's orthographic. You can see it here on top. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all vertices by hitting the A key. So A select all, D select all. And uh, I'm going to scale it from top to bottom or along the z-axis which is this blue one you can see it on the mini icon here under our screencast now you can use your mouse to uh, do this thing by uh, activating the transformation manipulator and left clicking on this small blue thing and just dragging it out 
Well, I recommend you, for the sake of speed, to get used to the usual Blender shortcuts for manipulating objects. Uh, which are, first of all, G for grab, which grabs everything. And now, by moving my mouse, I can move all those vertices around. By hitting escape, you cancel it. And if you grab it and hit left click, it will confirm the move. Ctrl Z, Z to go back. So, G for grab, move, left click to position. Ctrl Z undo. And the other uh, important shortcut is R to rotate. So hit R and then by moving your mouse around you can rotate your object. And the third one is S for scale. So hit hit S, move your mouse somewhere and then confirm it by left clicking. Undo by Control Z. Now, I only wanted to stretch it from top to bottom, which is, as I said, the z-axis. So what you do is you hit S for scale, hit. Now I can scale it all over the place. Now you hit Z and you will scale it only from top to bottom. There we go. So, S for scale, Z, and just scale it down till you get something what I've got on the screen. So, some like a disc shape right here. Now it's while we're getting closer to our rock it's obviously not natural because it's very very uh, proportional so what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. Now I'm going to go to top view and the reason why I'm going to top view is if I were in this custom view, for example, and started manipulating my individual vertices, such as this one, and selecting G for grab and just pulling it out, what I'm going to do, what I don't actually see right now, while this may look what I, as something I wanted to do, I actually don't see, didn't see that I pushed the vertex up, for example, and pushing it up is not what I want. So to prevent from pushing, moving it up, uh, I'm going to go to the top view and now I can never move it up and up and down because Z is locked. The Z axis is locked. I can only move it left to right. Now if I was going to uh, modify this rock by clicking on each and every individual vertex like this it, it would take ages and we don't want that. Blender however Blender has a really helpful tool down here proportional editing tool which I will now enable and now if I hit a G for grab, you will notice this uh, circle around my mouse, mouse cursor. Now what this circle uh, does, it, it shows me which vertices Blender will proportionally manipulate. So if I scroll my mouse and make this circle smaller, it's only going to select this couple of vertices. And if I make it bigger, it's going to select like almost half an object now. Or if I, I can select them all actually. So, so I'm going to make some random adjustments to this rock just to make it well look random. So, right click, grab, push, left click. Right click, grab, put it where I want, left click. I'm doing this randomly, you don't have to do it like I do. Just do whatever you feel like, what you want. Make sure to grab one of those uh, on the edge vertices and just, well this one looks like a cookie so I'm going to do it this, maybe this way, and that's it. Let's say this is what I wanted to have. Here is our first randomly looking but flat rock. Now, if you were to go over and over and over this while modeling to make all those rocks, we will go nuts. <laughs> so, in order to save some time, what I'm going to do is to go to the top view, and I will just duplicate this object. Uh, make sure you're in object mode now hit shift D which will make a rock 001 duplicate drag it somewhere else confirm go back to edit mode and adjust some vertices to make it look different because one thing in 3D world you don't want is uh, your objects to 
be the same because it's then it's going to be obvious to the viewer that these objects were computer generated or artificially made. And when, when, when you're done, just select another rock, uh, duplicate another rock. So always make sure to be in object mode. Why? Because if you were, if I was in uh, the edit mode like this, duplicated the rock, I would actually not have two rocks. This would be just two rocks combined in one in one object, which is not what I want. So I'm going to delete. So anyway, object mode, Shift D to duplicate, rotate it around by hitting the R key, put it where you want it, and just, oops grab and move those vertices around make it sort of look like a, like a puzzle mosaic sort of thing and try to have your lo rocks look as random as possible now duplicate this I will rotate again you should be used to it by now if not pause this video and do it slowly so grab your vertices G for grab left click G for grab, left click, G for grab, again left click, and just move them around. Doesn't matter which one you click. Uh, what I do recommend is to try to have equally sized polygons, but it's it's not crucial, but it's recommended uh, for later when we add materials so that they don't stretch as much. But don't worry about making mistakes. This is a tutorial. We're learning. It should be fun. Just uh, make sure that your rocks are not overlapping, because it's it's not going to look natural, and it's going to be a dead giveaway later on that you artificially generated those rocks. I mean, not that we're trying to hide the fact, but let's have a great start by making something cool. Okay, I'm going to duplicate another one here and modify a little bit to get the random shape and since I want a big, a huge pile of rocks and I don't want to do this all day I'm going to now select these guys all of them by shift right clicking and now I'm going to duplicate them as they are, as a whole group. And I will just place them somewhere. I will rotate them to break the pattern of uh, similarity and just place them somewhere. And I'm going to now fill in the blanks by manipulating this rock. Because I, I don't want to have, you know, even though we rotated these rocks around, people might still figure out that we did this. So I'm going to just hit select uh, all the individual rocks and move them around a little bit. Reshape them quickly. You can do this easily. Should be used, by, used to it by now. So grab, click, bang. There we go. And. get another duplicate group, uh, rotate like this, maybe add a, an extra rock in here in this space. Uh, if you're wondering how I was zoomed in, I was just scrolling my mouse wheel. And there we go, so we're just making sure that the lock rocks are not overlapping. We I sort of screwed this one up, so what, what I can do is quickly right shift right click select this area which is kinda funky now and with it selected you can just find the smooth vertex here and it will smooth out the hole that I accidentally made but it's not important Anyway, make sure to be in top view. I sort of was playing with fire by not being in top view. So, there we go. Just keep doing this, uh, filling the gaps until you get a decent, decently 
a big uh, rock formation. So Shift D, uh, place it. Uh, if you have this lamp getting in the way, feel free to delete it because we we don't need it. Actually, delete it right now. That's an order. And there we go. Same thing. Fill in blanks. Now, uh, as this is getting more and more complex, I don't want to be creating rocks that I won't be needing, but I want the rocks that I do need, so I'm going to position my camera right now. I'm going to go to front view, hit a control -Alt, alt number pad 0, or it's uh, here align camera to view, so align view, align camera to view should be somewhere, yeah, there it is. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my camera by right clicking, or if it's a problem for you, just click it here. I'm going to grab uh, Z, go up a little bit, then I'm actually, I'm going to grab middle click so I can zoom in and drag my mouse up and down. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, then I'm going to hit R to rotate my camera middle click again now I can rotate it up down left right I just want to do it like this maybe get it a little bit higher yes and rotate it so that it doesn't uh, look so far away and try to keep it straight now uh, you're, I assume you're going to have trouble with this so what you can do is here on the end panel so remember if you don't have it on hit end to turn it on you can manipulate those things uh, right here mainly on the z-axis you want the rotation to be set to zero y rotation is also recommended to be set to zero and rotation here about 65 or Yeah, like this, so that we Blender's going to render whatever is in in this brighter view. So we want our rocks, you know, the edge to be touching our edge. Now, what I can see right now is that some rocks are outside of my view and somewhere, so we don't actually need them, and we have some gaps here. Now, in order to help me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my mouse cursor over this little thing you will notice you're changing it to cross I will click it and I'll drag to the left what this did is it, it split my view into two and now I can I have three two 3d views I'm going to the uh, with my making sure that my cursor is above the second 3d view I'm going to hit T and then to get rid of those menus and now I can see uh, what my camera is seeing. I'm going to make this space a bit smaller. There we go. And now with my mo uh, mouse cursor on the left side, I'm gonna go to the top view. And now as I manipulate my rocks over here, I can see what my camera is going to see. So I'm just gonna get this rock, grab it over here, and just fill in those gaps. I don't want large gaps. There you go. Uh, now I can see I'm going to move this rock down here because there's obviously a, a rock missing in front and we don't want that especially in the front of our scene. Fix the, li the gap problem maybe by manipulating this rock. There we go. Uh, I don't think I see, yeah, we can't see this rock in the 3D view, so we'll do this and stretch it out a little bit to fill in the gap. 
go to this one. There we go. Bring this closer. That's right. And there is obviously a gap over there, so I'm just going to fix it like this. And there. There we go. Now I can see this rock. I can see I cannot see this rock, so I'm going to delete it. And if I zoom out, I also see that I don't need this rock, so it's going away. The general rule in Blender or in 3D modeling is don't render what you can't see. So we have a few rocks, and I'm noticing here on the top the left corner there is still another gap. I'm just going to quickly add another rock there. Since it's far away from the camera, it's not that noticeable, but you can still see it. I'm going to twist this rock a little bit. There we go. And this is pretty much it. Now, if you wanted to make it more realistic, you could add another layer of rocks on top, but for the purpose of this tutorial now, this is done. Uh, now, if we were to render it like this, there would be obviously an infinite hole under these rocks, which is the, what we don't want, and so I'm going to add uh, ground. So, making sure my cursor is in the middle of a scene, again, if you click by accident, hit Shift S, cursor to center. And now Shift A, add mesh, plane. Plane is just a simple quad, which we will now hit S for scale and scale up. Make sure in, you're in top view. And we will scale it to cover all our rocks. Now, since there are obviously uh, some rocks in front and we don't need all the background in the back, we will just grab it along the Y axis by hitting Y and just place it, place the plane so it's under our rocks. Now if we leave it like this it's going to be obviously fake because nothing in nature is just as straight as this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it by adding more geometry. Now I'm not going to use the modifier this time, I'm actually going to use the subdivide option here click subdivide and down here you can see the number of cuts make it 8 and on the fractal value which should be def by default on 0 so like this uh, add it to something like I had which is 0.12 now what that does it uh, it's going to randomly displace the vertices so that they are not on the straight plane anymore. <coughs> so it's going to give our surface a more random look. Uh, confirm it by going to object mode, get back to edit mode and do the whole thing again. Same options. Well, you don't need eight... Mm, yeah, eight cuts are enough. So this is now quite complex to look realistic and it's a bit displaced, so yeah, this is what I wanted to see. Uh, now uh, in object mode say shading to smooth so it's not, you don't see all the, all the quads. And uh, uh, there is one more problem with it and it's that it's now, or it sh at least should be, intersecting all our rocks and we don't want this so I'm going to grab it and move it along the Z axis by hitting the Z key and push it down a little bit. Not like this, just just a little bit. It can intersect some rocks because rocks can be in the ground but you just don't want them to be split in half. So move the ground down a little bit and so if, if you take a look on my end menu I pushed it down by 0 point, minus 0 0.15 there we go this is pretty much what I wanted and this concludes our modeling part of this tutorial 
uh, one more thing it's called plane so just call it ground why so if you if I wanted to select all my rocks I can just select them all uh, over here I can easily find my ground now camera everything because it's neatly named come on cursor okay there we go now let's go back to our camera view this is what we see uh, now uh, the next part of uh, the tutorial is adding materials to the scene. Now before we can actually see the materials we need uh, we'll need some kind of a preview. Now uh, over here on the top you see Blender Render. Blender Render is the default Blender rendering mode uh, which we are not going to use in this tutorial we are going to use Cycles Render. Uh, why? Uh, pretty much because Cycles will give us better looking result out of the box because it's a more advanced rendering engine and yeah that's pretty much why I picked it and it's also the future of Blender and so most of my tutorials will be about cycles now with cycles render selected <coughs> I can uh, again by going on these uh, three little lines I'm going to click them and split this view again uh, to have a small camera view, pers camera perspective view, if you don't have it, just hit zero. Uh, and this perspective view is going to give me an accurate preview of what's going on on my scene. So down here, there are several several view modes for your 3D world. Uh, up until now, we worked on the solid view. There is a wireframe view which will uh, which will not uh, render faces, you, it will only uh, render edges and you can pretty much when selecting objects see their wireframe. Uh, there is a texture view which will show textures, it doesn't show anything which, uh, because we don't have them right now, material view is similar thing uh, but it only shows, it shows you materials but uh, the one that I want is rendered view right now and it is going to actually do some real-time rendering of our scene. Now, what what we see here, it looks like junk, really. <clears throat> That's because we don't have any light in the scene other than our background, which is lighting it. So, this is this is going to be, uh, to be a simulation of the outdoor scene. I'm going to go to top view, make sure my cursor is... Well, I'm going to set it right here, because this is where I want my sun lamp. So I'm going to add a sun, so add lamp sun. Now we will notice that our scene immediately got brighter. Now it, it looks kind of funny, <coughs> mainly because this sun is uh, shooting straight down from the top. If you go to the front view you will see the, this little line ray going down. Now. <coughs> Normally, unless you live like somewhere in Africa, <laughs> you will never see this. <coughs> the sun always comes from uh, some angle, and this is what we're going to do right now. For the sake of... Uh, the sun is an unlimited light source, so it doesn't matter where I position it, but the rotation of it does. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit on the side, and I'm going to sort of place it to the front and rotate it like this so that my, the source of light comes from up front uh, actually no, I'm going to do it like this so that I get more shadows in front you however are welcome to set your sun however you want now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little sun which sets properties for our lamp now if you if you look closely you will notice noise. We can remove some of the noise by hitting multiple important samples. This will out of the box clear up some of that noise. Uh, not all of it, but we'll get to it soon. Uh, also, sun is uh, by default color of the of the lamp of the sun is white. Uh, in nature, sun sun is sort of yellowish. So click on this 
white space uh, by default you will have RGB click on HSV and uh, have your values somewhere around I already know because I tried earlier 0.15 for hue and saturation 0.1 this will make your sun sort of a yellowish color and the value should be 1 and I'm going to increase my strength to 5 because I know it works well okay maybe maybe 4 we can tweak this later anyway and that's it uh, now uh, another thing to notice is that we have a background and this background also has some sort of a strength which we don't see right now but if we use nodes you will see that it has strength of 1 if I'm going if I was to bring it up it's going to light our scene all over the place now I don't want background to do this I just but I do want it to uh, do just a slight touch of uh, bright blue light which is sort of the color of the atmosphere it's if I set it to 0.3 you won't really see it but trust me it does make an effect it does make the light more look more realistic just by having this so yeah like 0 0.6, 0 0.19 and value of 1 strength we will adjust those lights later when we have our materials but anyway now we have a bright preview of what's going on uh, to get rid of this noise I'm going to go to the render settings here and now here on the samplings sampling I will set my preview samples to well let's say 32 it's not important this is just a preview not a final result now And now uh, pay attention to the left side of the screen. Uh, down here we have our, this little icon which changes the window type. Up until now we, we've been uh, working in 3D view but now I'm going to switch to the node editor. Now with my node editor I can set all, all the things that I've done for the sun here I can also change here so this strength of 4 if I change it to 10 it will brighten up the scene if we go back to 4 it's there uh, by using the node editor it's actually easier to work on well on this simple thing it's not important but when you work with more complex materials such as the rock which we are going to make right now it's actually a lot easier so over here I'm going to select this rock on my backup 3D view and with this rock selected I'm gonna go here to the material panel and it already has a default material but uh, for me for some reason it shouldn't but should be like this well anyway it's there So this default material is we're going to rename it now. We'll call it rock dot again dot zero zero one for easier identification of the material. And now I'm going to hit use nodes here, and it's giving me a default diffuse BSDF node connected to the surface of the material out. So what are these nodes? Material output is basically what you're going to see on the surface of the rock. For now we will only focus on the surface, volume and displacement are from more advanced tutorials. Uh, diffuse BSDF, uh, diffuse is basically the color of your object. So if I was to change this white to some let's say magenta my rock is going to turn magenta. Now actually all my rocks turn magenta because for some reason I had a material assigned to them and uh, well I'm going to correct this now by selecting this rock and I'm going to call rock 000 and now I'm going to this is what you're going you guys are going to have if you work by default uh, 
so so anyway the diffuse BSDF is uh, basically a color of your surface and uh, so in this case surface of our rock well obviously if we were to leave it like this it's not even closely remotely going to look like a rock so how can we make it look like a rock well in 3d we use textures to do this uh, so I'm going to shift a just like in 3d view shift a add stuff in here in node editor I'm gonna go for texture image texture and I'll just place this node over here I will hit open and in my folder that I already have prepared here uh, somewhere where are you landing there we go Information. I will select one rock texture that I already prepared now uh, on my if you're watching this on my website underneath this video I'm going to provide you links to where to get those uh, textures and uh, to download them so if you're right there right now uh, pause this video and read the instructions and download the texture what you need is a seamless a rock texture and once you have it add it here and then a left uh, mouse button down on this yellow thing and drag the node dra drag this connector to the yellow node of this color you will notice that our rock turned to some funky gray and there is obviously nothing going on with it and this is because Blender doesn't know how to apply texture to our rock in order to tell it uh, how we have to add another another thing uh, called uh, from input texture coordinate and texture coordinate we will choose object and connect it to our vector down here now what object does is it tells blender to apply uh, our texture relative to the object origin but don't worry if you don't understand it right now and this is actually not the best way to apply the texture but for the purpose of this tutorial it's simple and it's going to do now you can already see that we have some rocky sort of looking texture but uh, depending on which texture you picked uh, and downloaded uh, it may seem too big and or too small so what you can do to fix this is to add another converter or actually sorry, sorry vector mapping node hit them in between and now by doing this you can change the scale of your texture so if I scale this up uh, the texture of the rock will become smaller or if I scale this down to let's say 0.5 you can input values manually by clicking in the middle or just clicking these triangles on the side I can manipulate the scale of the the rock so for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to leave it to 0.7 for my rock but depending on what you've got in your screen you may choose differently um, if you have some sort of repetitive patterns obviously showing you can downscale upscale or change the location of the texture as well to maybe find something that looks more attractive to you anyway it's up to you to play with this for this particular rock this is going to be enough uh, now in order to have all those rocks use the same this rock material what you have to do is uh, go back to your 3d world top view uh, now I'm going to have to select them all the easiest way to do is by uh, hit the C button on your keyboard and just show blender what you want selected by holding down the mouse button and selecting like this just like painting in uh, Photoshop or whatever you like to use now you you'll also notice that I selected the ground uh, which is fine uh, oh yeah left click to confirm come on oh right click to confirm sorry uh, which is fine but if you don't want it you can just shift right click and shift right click again and you will deselect the ground so now all we have is our rocks selected 
now with all those rocks selected uh, you want to shift right click on the rock that you've already painted so it has to be you will notice that it has a brighter orange edge around it this means that this object is active now if I hit control L or link and select materials I will link this material to all the rocks so all the rocks use the same material and if I uh, go back to my node editor and uh, do anything to these rocks such as change the bitmap that I'm using for the texture they will all update at the same time now I will control Z that because I actually like that rock uh, Uh, so, anyway, now all the rocks say uh, share the same material. Well, obviously, uh, this is a dead giveaway that we generate this. So, we want to add some variation to the rocks. Now, since this uh, node editor is a very powerful tool to manipulate everything, I'm going to show you a neat little trick what you can do with your texture because right now this texture may seem too bright to you or you know something is missing and so on now you don't have to go to Photoshop to manipulate its color you can actually do this here in the node editor by adding for example a hue saturation node in between the image texture and the diffuse BSDF you now have added a hue saturation filter so, if I change the hue of my rock, I can basically change its color. If I change the saturation, I can tell Blender how intensive the, I want the colors of my rock. Or if I change the value, I can make the whole thing darker or brighter. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna go a bit darker because it's going to hide the fact that we are repeating these things uh, now another thing that I want for my rock because you notice that it's it sort of does look like a rock but there's something missing and uh, what's missing is actually some glossiness so you want your rocks to be shiny and to have them shine and not to be like this we need to add shininess to it and the way we do this is we add another modifier uh, another shader which is called surprise surprise the glossy shader now what glossy shader does is, is sort of a reflective thing if I use it like this uh, if I set the roughness to zero well you can't see it here because there's nothing to reflect but uh, basically it's going to behave like a chrome material if we had a sky over our scene you would see clouds in it uh, in these rocks now we're going to uh, put it back to roughness to 0 0.2 which is fine but in order to have our texture material uh, mate uh, our texture here and the glossiness we need to combine these two and in order to combine them there is another shader called mix shader I will plug this glossy BSDF to the bottom diffuse BSDF to the top and there we go you can already see some texture under our rock well there's obviously something wrong and uh, it's because and right now we, uh, with this factor amount of 0.5 we have half the diffuse and half the glossy and we want the diffuse to be uh, the dominating one so by sliding this factor to the left this is exactly what I'm going to get and if I leave it to like 0.1 it's going to give us some glossy uh, smooth looking rocks that sort of are wet and have a little bit of shininess all over the surface now there are other things we could add to this rock to make them make it even more realistic but that's a matter for a more complex tutorial which we don't have time right now so I'll leave it at that but what we want to do is have some differences to our rock first of all I don't like them they're too bright still so I'm 
going to change my value to point 0.2 and now I want to add some different different textures to this rock and you can do this by obviously well here's an example I will select this rock now it shares the same rock 00, zero material uh, just as the other 25 rocks as we see here do now if you click on this number 25 or you will have some other amount you will make this rock a single user so now you have a rock material rock 002 and uh, you can now if you tweak this material it's going to seem different now I can make this rock brighter and if I manipulate my situation I can make it look a little bit different so yeah this one has something on it, but it's still kind of obvious. Uh, it's sort of the same texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load another texture in it. This one is also from CG Textures. Uh, make sure to reset your hue to 0.5 to see the original. Now this rock is kind of funky brownish, so I'm going to reduce its saturation a little bit. No, actually I'm going to leave it, but uh, there's something wrong with the scale. It's a different scale texture, so I'm actually, if I leave it at 1, this is the original, it's fine. I will actually leave this as 1. And I will now select another rock, click on this number to make it single ma single user material, and I'm going to load some other texture that I have which is this one. Now this one is obviously off the scale so I need to downscale it a little bit somewhere like or maybe back I mean everything is 3D is trial and error I never know the right answer to everything uh, make it a little bit brighter, there we go now we can select another rock that we haven't used before, make it single user, then again open a different image here. Oh, undo please. Make it a single user now. Create different texture. Yeah, this one is a perfect candidate for hue, I think. Or no, it's not because it's grayscale. And it's but yeah, it's just sort of a different material. And anyway, now you have your four materials. You can just select rocks randomly. Well, actually, I'm going to make another single user here because I prepared quite a bit, of, quite an amount of textures before this tutorial. There we go. Now I can select this rock and just randomly pick one of our materials. Yeah, but I don't like it. I'll make it darker so that it's not obviously repeating. Then I'll select this one, select another rock, uh, make it a single user, make it brighter, select this one, take another texture. Yeah, this one works. Single user, make it. Well, now it's a dead giveaway now. Make it very, very. Yeah, like this. I maybe select this one, random select another rock. Perfect. This one. Just make sure that the two adjacent rocks don't have the same texture. And since this one is obviously like that, the uh, that other brown one, I'm now going to make it green. Just to be a pain in it. Or, yeah, here. Ooh, what did we do? We clicked on something wrong. Oh, there. Um, this one, make it single user, let's make it like reddish. I kind of like this, this texture actually, I'm gonna make it more like funky green, like this one, um, blah 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 blah, brighter. 
Make it look like anyway, those guys in the background are not so noticeable if they're the same. Uh, mainly because they're in the background, the user is not going to focus on them. But yeah. So let's say this is what we wanted. We now have we now have our rock set. Now there's obviously something very wrong with our ground because it's only plain white, so we will add a new material just as we did with the rock. And we'll actually we will pick one of the rocks, such uh, one of the darkest ones, like this. And this is actually quite alright. Now maybe I'll just for the sake of tutorial I'll make a single user, call it ground. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. And I'll just scale this up a little bit. And give it like a 0 0.05 value. I want it very dark. <coughs> I don't want it to shine at all. There we go. This is our set scene pretty much set for rendering, guys. If you managed to come this far, congratulations. So, we'll go back into our 3D view. And uh, before we, we render this <coughs> result, sorry, something in my throat. Let me pause the recording. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, so, as I was saying, we are now going to render this. We're going to do, tweak our rendering options. Uh, over here, you can tweak the re resolution of your result, which is by default uh, this HD resolution. And but it's only going to render 50% of it, which for the purpose of this tutorial is fine. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can change this to GPU compute. This will give you some faster rendering. Now, in case Blender crashes, it's something wrong with your GPU, use CPU instead. Now, speaking of crashes, uh, I just remembered I haven't saved my file yet. So, I'm just going to save it here in the tutorial directory as rock002. Make sure to save often. Uh, it's not the best lesson because we are sometime in the tutorial and I forgot to warn you. One hour, oof. Uh, but anyway, let's set this for rendering quickly. Uh, if you put this to 100%, you will get the full resolution. I will leave it to 50%. Uh, what you want here is to go to your uh, not volume sampling, but sampling. Set render samples to something like 256 should be enough for this scene. If you get noise, set it higher. If it looks clean, you can get away with less. Uh, on the light path here, we will just turn on no caustics. This will give you faster rendering. The caustics are uh, is an effect that you get when you have glass materials. We don't have glass here, so we don't need this. It will save us some rendering time. And this is pretty much it. And, uh, if you're rendering on CPU, you can set these things to 16, this X and Y, to get even faster rendering. But for the sake of this tutorial, it's quick and it's not important. So once again, save your scene and hit F12 on the keyboard to render. Now I'm going to pa pause this recording while it's rendering so you don't have to wait. Well, it's still rendering, but I can already see that I'm not quite happy with the glossiness of my rocks. So I'm going to stop rendering by clicking up here, hit escape to go back to 3D view. And I'm going to quickly select all my uh, rocks. I should have probably done this before, but... Uh, I'm gonna back, gonna go back to node editor. At least for this uh, this rock, I'm gonna set this shader to point two, or actually to point one five. It's gonna get me a tiny little bit more wet looky, wet look. So I'm going to quickly do this to all my rocks. J uh, I mean, uh, at least the ones in the front view. Some of the rocks will already have this set because they're using the same material, but just for those that don't, I will quickly manipulate this. Anyway, I'm gonna pause recording. Anyway, some of the rocks, uh, 
look fine as they were, so I I just tweaked some of them. Uh, I tweaked to 0 0.015 and some of them are 0.1. But anyway, let's render this now, and uh, I'll be back when it's done. Here we are, here we are, almost done rendering, and our look, rocks seem to look pretty good. I mean, they are not perfect; that we could improve them further. But like I said, it's a matter for another tutorial. Uh, uh, this one is not my best work to the right, but yeah, it's fine. For the sake of speed, it's fine, and this is pretty much it. Now there is one other final thing we do in 3D when this when we have this done. Uh, it's called post processing. Now a lot of people do post processing in Photoshop, which is which is fine, but there are some advanced post processing things which which cannot be done there simply because Blender has still knows the 3D properties of each and every one of the pixels on your picture which is something that Photoshop doesn't well but that's also a matter for another tutorial now I'm going to show you what post processing is all about so go back to your node editor here and down here you will see these little pictures so it's node 3 to display uh, the image manipulation. So we will use nodes, we will use, we will click on backdrop, and what you see here is our input render and the output called composite. Composite is uh, basically the picture which has done through the compositor. And in plain English, if I add an uh, output viewer node, Oops, there we go. I can now see here in the backdrop our image. If you have a bigger resolu resolution or something, you can zoom in and out your backdrop. Over here. Uh, now, what I can do with this image, I can uh, do all sorts of effects to it before I get the final result or the composite. Such as, for example, uh, let's say I want to tweak the colors a little bit. I can add a color, um, let's see, okay, color balance node is a really nice one. Uh, so make sure it's connected to your image and to your viewer. And whatever, whenever I do something here, it's going to affect my image. So this is the shadow wheel. And what I want, for the sake of this tutorial, let's say I want my shadows to be a bit bluer, which they should be. And I want my highlights to be a bit more on the yellow side. Just to make it more, I don't know, get a natural feel look. Maybe mid tones could be pulled somewhere. Yeah. But anyway, do whatever you want with it. It's your picture. I'm gonna set it somewhere like this. I mean, you can't see the color on YouTube anyway. Um, and yeah, another thing you could do is uh, maybe sharpen it up a little bit. So we have our filter and filter. By default, it's soften, which thank you very much. And sharpen. Now this is obviously way blown out of proportion, but a value of 0.25. Oh, or maybe even less, like 0.15. So very, very slight shadow. If you switch between these views you will see just a tiny little bit of sharpness maybe this is even too much like point 0.1 just a tiny little bit so you don't have to unsharp later yeah that's uh, actually I hate it I'm going to put, put it to point 0.05 there now this is obviously a simple example and now I'm going to show you a more complex one we will add a vignette Vignetting is something you get with real cameras, where you have uh, darker borders on the edge of your picture. Uh, this is something that photographers hate, but in 3D world we actually uh, add this effect, just to, uh, you know, make it more uh, look realistic. Uh, so I'm going to add a few things. First of all, distort lens distortion. I'm not going to dis explain what it does, if you don't know. It's not important right now. Well, I'm connected to the viewer so you can see. So if I add this 
it's gonna make an elliptic shape out of everything now I'm going to add uh, where is it converter mat node in between set it to greater than and set my value to zero so I'll get an ellipse like this then I'm going to add a filter uh, blur node set it to fast Gaussian to save some time click relative and set it to about 5% now you can you're of course welcome to experiment with it but I think 5 is yeah it looks good to me and uh, now I, all I want is to combine my original picture with this one so that we get a little bit vignetting so we will add color mix node uh, we will plug this one vignette one in the bottom and the one from the sharpen to the top one and we will select and multiply now it's obviously too much and too obvious so you have to reduce these settings somewhere like point point zero two and when you're done uh, make sure to connect your whatever is connected to your viewer to also connect it to composite and now if we go to our UV image editor here this is our render result well, yeah, we, don't, we don't see it, we will have to re-render to actually see it here but yeah, in node editor uh, so if I connect this to the viewer node so and I can click control Z what? oops I made a mistake so much for a so much for a tutorial why can't we see so come on this was our original image and this is the ending result so We've changed the color a little bit and there is a little bit of vignette, maybe 0.3 just so we can see it. Yeah, if you see it obviously then you should make it less. People always do too much. But anyway, uh, this is it for our rendering result. You can now set your rendering resolution to the maximum. If you can use the GPU, re-render and you will get a full, fully done image in a full resolution. Your welcome to send to me to review anyway th uh, this concludes our tutorial and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it will be motivating for your blender future uh, as I say feel free to experiment to make different rock formations you can go in even further by adding several layers of rocks so that you don't see ground underneath maybe close those uh, gaps by putting rocks on top and anyway Play with your scene, practice, and don't give up. I know Blender is difficult when you start, but it can be lots of fun. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to place them under comments below. Uh, I will be happy to answer. Also, uh, if you were watching on YouTube and didn't watch on my website, I recommend you go there, because you will find li links to the textures I use and uh, some additional uh, written information about the tutorial. Again, thanks for watching and happy blending!